Greetings everyone. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to use the ROP gadget tool to generate a ROP chain to perform a return-oriented programming exploit on 64-bit Linux. Now, that's not quite as trivial as it may seem. It's not as easy as taking the exploit code I used in my previous demo, running it in a 64-bit VM, regenerating the ROP chain, and then having a shell work. So first, I'm going to show the challenges we face when trying to do ROP on 64-bit Linux, and then how they can be overcome. So to begin, let us refresh ourselves by looking at the source code I used in my previous demo. Standard stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show, like I said, the challenges associated with this. So the first thing I need to do is compile it. I'm going to compile it static. And I'm going to call this example 3.1s. Then I'm going to use the ROP gadget tool, ROP chain, binary, on my binary, and then pipe that to a file called ROPstat. And while I'm here, I'm just going to make it executable. Okay. Next, I will open my file. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before, where I get rid of all this junk and get rid of all the white space and so on. So the first thing you're going to see when you look at these instructions is null bytes null bytes everywhere. And this is going to cause two specific problems. Before I get into that, let me finalize this file. So one thing is, um, plus equals, there we go, the padding to the return address is 12 in 64-bit rather than 16 like in before. And then go here and add my print p and then save that. So if we go back to our source code, we're going to see that we have string copy here. And since we have a bunch of null bytes in our instructions, this is not going to work because string copy is going to break on null bytes. So we could replace string copy with mem copy, which will happily copy whatever bytes, regardless if they're null or not. But as I'm going to show you, there's actually a second problem with this. So if I go back to my terminal here and I attempt to run my binary with my ROP stat, I'm going to see that I get a bash warning, command substitution ignored null byte in input. So not only is string copy going to be a hindrance to us, but we can't even input this using bash through command substitution because of the null bytes. So we need to do two things. One is overcome the input limitation using with bash, and then two is have a vulnerable method other than string copy. So in order to do that, I have made a modification to my vulnerable code here with a couple of key differences. The first, of course, is replacing mem str copy with mem copy, and then I also add a second parameter pass into this function, which is the length of uh, the number of bytes to copy. In main, I have a rather large buffer, and why this is so big, I'll show in a moment. And then I have a file here which I will take from standard in. I open it as read only and binary. I then call fread to get the contents of the file stored in this buffer. I get the number of bytes actually read and I pass the file contents and the bytes to overflow. So I'm going to be using a file input method rather than a command substitution at the command line method to get my ROP chain to the program. So, okay, let me close this. And so now we're going to have to do the same thing before, but we're going to have to modify our ROP chain to work with file input rather than command line input. So the first thing I'm going to have to do here is compile my code statically. I'm going to call this AS. Then I need to regenerate my ROP chain with my new binary, which I'm just going to replace into the same file. Then I go back to my file and I have to do this white space deleting again. All right, there we go. I have to add my offset again, 12. And then before I was doing print p, here I'm going to do something different because I need this to be output to a file. So I'm going to create a new variable called f. I'm going to set this to open. I'm going to call my file ROPS. You can call this whatever you want. Do write binary. I'm going to do f.write p, which is my packed bytes, and then f.close. I'm going to save that. And then go 
close this. Okay, back to my terminal. Now, whereas before I used command substitution to feed Robsat to my binary, what I'm going to do this time is run it as a standalone Python script, and that is going to generate a file called ROPS. And we can see the contents of this by using the xsd command like so. And it's basically just a raw byte output of the ROP chain. Now you'll notice that what I have here is actually pretty big. In fact, if we get the size of it, it's 620 bytes. If I go to my 32-bit VM and I have the same file here generated the exact same way, it's 152 bytes. So pretty significant size difference. And the reason for this is twofold. The first one is pretty obvious. It's 64-bit code versus 32-bit, and thus all the addresses are 64-bit rather than 32-bit. So the exact same ROP chain on a 64-bit system will be twice the size as a 32-bit system. But there's one other thing. And so if we go back and we look at our ROP stat here, we're going to see that there are a lot more add rax1 or inc rax instructions in this version than in a 32-bit version. And the reason for that is that the syscall we're executing, which is execve, is syscall 11 in 32-bit Linux, but syscall 59 in 64-bit Linux. So not only are all our instructions twice the size, we also have to execute 40 additional instructions to do the exact same thing. So the point of all this is that 64-bit ROP chains are going to be significantly larger than 32-bit ROP chains. Okay, now that we have the ROPS file, this is actually just a trivial matter of calling my binary with the file name, and then boom, I have my shell. So there you go. That is how to execute return-oriented programming exploit in 64-bit Linux. Thanks for watching.